Okay, so today we're going to be learning about complete subjects and complete predicates. So um, just listen for the lesson, ask your questions later, let me get through the lesson, um, and then um, we'll go from there. So every sentence is made up of words, and you already know that, right? But <coughs> in order for a sentence to be a true sentence, it has to have three things, right? It needs to be a complete sentence, it needs to have a complete subject, and it needs to have a complete predicate. So first, we have these group of words, right? And I can put these words in whatever order, and do they make sense? Architects, us, surprise, can. No, that doesn't make any sense, right? If I mix it around, that still doesn't make it. Architects, surprise, us, can. No, that doesn't make any sense. So the first thing that a sentence has to be and when I take notes, you take notes. The first thing that a sentence has to be one has to be a complete thought. That means it has to make sense. Okay, so when you read it, it has to make sense to you. Okay, so when I put it like this, does that make sense? Architects surprise us can? No, that doesn't make sense. So let's rearrange this so it does. Architects can surprise us. All right, there we go. Now we have a sentence that makes sense. Okay, so there's the first thing done. The first thing, complete thought. Check. Okay, the second thing that all sentences must have is a complete subject. And the complete subject is who or what the sentence is about. So let's look at a different sentence. Some architects bring nature indoors. So looking at this sentence, what is that, who or what is that sentence about? Well, you should have answered some architects. Okay, who or what is this sentence about? It's about some architects. Okay, <clears throat> the second thing that a sentence needs to have complete predicate. And the complete predicate, that tells us what the subject does or is. Okay, so it tells us something about the subject. All right, so if we go back to our sentence then, we've already determined that we have a complete subject. What is this sentence about? It's about some architects. Well, a complete predicate tells us what the subject does. What does the subject do? Well, the subject does this. They bring nature indoors. So this sentence, if I were to look at my checklist of what a sentence must have, is it a complete sentence? Is it a complete thought? Does it make sense? Some architects bring nature indoors. Yes, it does have make sense. Does it have a complete subject? Somebody or something that does something? Yes, it does. I'm going to check that. Does it have a complete predicate? Yes, it does. I'm going to go ahead and check that. Okay, all three things. I have all three of, the, three of those things, so I can check that off as being a complete sentence. Now, how do I find a complete sentence or a complete predicate within a sentence? 
Well, in, first off, you're going to start with the complete subject. So, and this will help you in today's exercises. Oops. To find the complete subject, ask who or what does something. So, in this sentence, who or what does something? Some architects. Now that I found out what the subject is, now I can try to determine what the complete predicate is. To find the complete predicate, I'm going to ask about the subject. What does the subject do? Well, in here, what does the subject do? The subject brings nature indoors. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this, um, apply what we've just learned. So on your paper at the very top, I want you to write grammar. Page seven. So that's where we are in the grammar book. And we're going to do P and A 1 through 10. P and A stands for practice and apply. Of course, you always need name and period. So once you've uh, finished taking down these notes, go ahead, open up your grammar book, turn to page 7, and we'll get started with the first exercise. All right, so if you look at number one on page seven, this is the first exercise. Frank Lloyd Wright designed an unusual home in the Pennsylvania woods. You don't need to copy down this sentence. Don't worry about copying down the sentence. But what I do want you to worry about is finding out the complete subject and the complete predicate. So I'm going to go ahead and ask my question. Remember, the question is to find the complete subject. I'm going to ask who or what does something. So, complete subject, who or what does something. This I want you to write on your paper. Who or what does something. CS, who or what does something. Does anybody think they know the answer to that question? Raise your hand. Based on this sentence, Frank Lloyd Wright designed an unusual ho home in the Pennsylvania woods. Everybody should be asking themselves, who or what does something? Uh, yes, right there. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and put Frank. Lloyd Wright. Isn't he the something that's doing something? Yeah. Okay. So this is my complete subject. Now my complete predicate. Remember to find the complete predicate. You have to ask, what does the subject do? So what does Frank Lloyd Wright do? Let's go ahead and do that. Right. What does... And here, let's substitute, let's write this. What does Frank Lloyd Wright do? On your paper, go ahead and answer that.
jump in. If you finished your iReady test while we're doing this, go ahead and jump on in. Jaden, what do you think uh, the answer to this question is? Good. Designed an unusual home in the Pennsylvania woods. So then that's your answers. Those are your answers. So a lot of work guaranteed, but another part of English is working on your penmanship. Look how beautiful my handwriting is. I know. You're jealous, right? Well, that's because I took a lot of years of practicing my handwriting. Okay? I've read all of your essays, our uh, short answer responses. A lot of you need to work on your penmanship, okay? The reason why we write is so people can understand our ideas. You might be able to um, express a thought really well in words, but can you also write it down? Okay, don't always rely on computers. What if there's a zombie apocalypse and all the computers are gobbled up? Then you have to rely on handwriting. Guess what, those who have good penmanship are gonna outlive you. Okay, so make sure you keep that skill. It's important throughout your entire life. So let's go ahead and move on to number two. I want you to do number two on your own. You can work with someone next to you. Um, but do number two. I only want you to do it like I did right here. You don't need to write the in, rewrite the entire sentence like I did up here. But rewrite these questions and then answer those questions. Okay? And then... Real quick before I let you go, okay, everybody take a look up here. Real quick before I let you go, I want you to do one and two. I want you to do two like I did up here, but once you get to three, start making a table that looks like this. And over here, you're going to put all your complete subjects, and over here, you'll put all your complete predicates, right? So you'll write the complete subject here. You'll write the complete predicate here for number three, then you'll go to four, same thing, five, and you'll go all the way to 10. Any questions? All right, I'm gonna be floating around helping you out. 